everyone, it's Shannon, and welcome to my channel, The Daily DIYer. Today I have brought you upstairs and into my teenage daughter's bedroom. We're doing a big bedroom makeover for her, so make sure to subscribe so you can come back and see the big bedroom reveal. But today we're going to focus on this gorgeous accent wall that we added to her space. I have fallen in love with these gorgeous trim walls. They add so much style to your space, but they're also subtle enough that it doesn't impose in on your decor. And the great thing is, is you don't need a bunch of big tools or even prior skills or knowledge of how to do this. I'm just going to show you some of those basic materials that you're going to need and also the process in which I created this beautiful accent wall. Now let's go ahead and talk about some of the tools and materials that you're going to need to create this wall. And of course, the most basic thing that you're going to need is your trim. So I've seen several different ways of how to do this. Me personally, I went ahead with this PVC style lattice, which is called in the store, and I'm using a one and three quarter inch size. They come larger, they come smaller. The reason I went with this is because it's much, much easier to cut than wood, which you could use a one by two. This is basically a one by two piece of wood. It is just thinner, and because it's plastic, it's much easier to cut. And then to cut it down, I'm using miter shears. So instead of the alternative of using a miter saw or a hand saw and miter box, I have these amazing miter shears. You can find these on Amazon and I will link this down in the description box below. These are so, so handy, whether you're crafting or whether you're doing trim work. We've used this a lot when we did our she shed build and working on the trim in there. So of course we went ahead and did the same thing in here as we created this trim wall. So what miter shears are, they're basically a big blade in the middle, kind of work just like scissors, but the cool thing about them is, is they have this little bar in the middle that you can click and it changes the angle. So you will sit your material up into that angle and chop down on it with your blade. And the cool thing is, is these blades cut through this PVC material like butter. You'll also need something to nail your trim to the wall with. I'm actually using the Royal B Airstrike. It's an 18 gauge brad nailer, so it does really small finishing nails. I'm also using one and a half inch size. If you're new to using something like this, I definitely recommend this one. It is battery powered, it's pretty lightweight, super simple, it has a safety on it. You push it against the wall, pull the trigger, it shoots the nail. So it couldn't be more simple great for beginners, great for advanced even, and I will make sure to link this down in the description box below as well. Beyond those three things, you are also going to need spackle and your paint. Now that you know what we need for this project, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So of course we're gonna start with the before shot of this wall. She had the room decorated for Valentine's Day at the time. And these photos are actually her photography, but they pop right off the wall and we move them to a new area. She was just ready for a change and an update. So to get this beautiful trim wall effect, I started by measuring out for a frame. So before we add the decorative pieces to the inside, I'm going to be cutting my lattice down to size so that it will fit on the right left side and left sides of the wall along with the top piece i have my miter shears just set at a straight angle so that it will cut a straight cut and then i measured to make sure or test fitted this piece to make sure it was the right size and then used my brad nailer to nail the trim into place and you can, of course, use some type of adhesive if you would like this to be permanent. However, we wanted to make sure that if we ever changed our mind and wanted to take the trim off of the wall, all we would have are some nail holes to fill. So we opted out of using any type of adhesive and just use these brad nails to affix everything. So you can see I have the right and left sides attached and then it was time to measure for the top. And I actually did not do a bottom piece because we have a white baseboard down there and I didn't feel like it needed 
another piece of trim since the baseboard kind of acted like the trim for me. All right, so I have the wall trimmed out. And now what I need to do is take my stud finder and run it along the wall and mark where the studs are so that I know those are specific points where I need to secure the decorative pieces that are gonna go in the middle. That way they will have a good contact point where the nails are going to keep them secured to the wall. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. But here is what it's looking like so far. So once I had my guidelines marked, I had my daughter find a inspiration uh, photo on Pinterest. So this is the one that she found and that's what I tried to mimic. However, I did kind of do my own thing too. And of course you can always do whatever design works. And this is kind of the great thing about this is you can get creative and there's really no right or wrong. I will kind of walk you through how I created this design. Um, I am using 45 degree angles or right angles for all of my points and triangle shapes. It's on the miter shears, so just made it easy to go with this um, angle. And I just sort of figured out where specifically I wanted the middle of the wall to be. And then I took a longer piece of trim and added in like the basically the point where I was going to be working off from. So it's kind of important to find a spot that you can start and then work off of there. So I did this longer cross piece first. I just held it up, marked my angles and used my miter shears to cut them down and attach them with the brad nails. So after I got up this first piece, I was really kind of worried because I am definitely not great at geometry and angles and all of the things that go along with triangles. So I decided to just kind of go this my own way after getting that first piece on and trying to create these center triangles. So instead of trying to get every angle and measurement correct, I created this template and used it as a spacer. So that way I knew, I may not know the exact angle of where my uh, triangle needed to go, but I at least knew that they would be spaced out evenly and it would kind of correct itself by using this. For the bottom part of this triangle, I just cut a second piece the same length as the first one and then cut my first angle where it would be at the point. And then I held it up against the wall and just drew a line and followed the line that I drew so that it would line up with that side piece. So again, it's definitely not perfect and it probably makes some um, people cringe, but I'm more of an artist than I am a... Uh, woodworker or construction worker. So this is just me trying to figure out the best route and what made sense to me. And actually it all really comes together in the end. So don't be, don't make it more difficult than it really needs to be. Um, and just go with the flow. Just cut some trim, stick it up there. You can always cut more off if you need to. And that's kind of how I went about this whole project. My daughter did get in and help a little bit with this, so it's kind of good for her to see how some of these tools work and how projects like this come together. So it was neat to have her there and kind of help out too. So you can see I added that top new piece and then kind of worked my way around the wall. For this inside smaller triangle, I took my template and ran it with a pencil along the side and basically drew in my triangle before cutting pieces of trim that actually would just be wasteful if I didn't do it correctly. So this way I found exactly the size of the triangle I was needing and then held my trim up and marked it and then cut it with my miter shears. This 
top part is where I just kind of got creative and added a couple horizontal trim pieces just so I wouldn't have everything at that angle. And then I had some basic horizontal pieces too to add some contrast. Now this last uh, angled piece, I kind of cut to where I thought I needed it and then I used that template. Uh, one thing I suggest if you're going to be doing longer pieces, it definitely helps to just stick a nail into basically one point you know where it needs to be anchored, which I did at the top. So you can see I'll run that template piece up to the top and add a nail. And then the bottom piece is still able to be moved around and then you can secure it where you need it with more brad nails after you have it in place. Another obstacle that I had on this wall was actually there was a light switch so I just held up a trim piece and marked out where the light switch was and cut that out. So once I had this trim cut out and pieced together, I went ahead and started working on the bottom, creating more horizontal lines that mimicked what was going on up above it. I also used a level to help make sure all of my pieces were perfectly horizontal. And again, used my template to make sure all of my slats were evenly spaced apart. Here is the finished wall, sort of, kind of. It's just got all the trim on it. Now it is time to spackle. So I'm just going to use this dry deck spackling. It goes on pink, and when it's dry, it turns white, and then we can sand. only do we want to spackle all the nail holes but we also want to spackle these joints where our pieces come together that is going to give us that seamless look we want when we go to paint. All right, so it is the next day. I let this sit overnight so it could dry all the way. It's time to sand it down. And then I'm gonna paint it out gray. And I know you guys are gonna ask what color gray paint this is, so let me show you. So we're gonna keep the color gray that's on the wall and just paint the trim out in the same color. And literally, this is just grab and go paint from Walmart. It's Color Place brand in the color granite gray.
definitely do a good job sanding to make sure you have no rough spots or raised areas that's going to make your design look a little funky. So take your time, run, run your hand over it to make sure everything's smooth. And then I went ahead and taped off all the way around it. All the spots that I did not want gray, I taped off. We're going to be using a combination of a paintbrush and paint roller. The paintbrush is your first step and that is to get all of the edges of all of your trim. So make sure you get all of those um, edges, tops and bottoms that might be visible. And then what you'll do is you'll come back in with your paint roller and you're going to put that on the top of your trim to give it a nice, clean, smooth finish. Whereas your paintbrush is going to kind of have more of a brush stroke look, the paint roller will smooth all of that out. This is definitely the part where all of the magic happens and all of your hard work starts to come together where you can see the beautiful finish of your trim wall, having that unified look of the wall color that blends beautifully with your trim color. So again, I wanted to remind you what this wall looks like in the before and then what a big change, just some trim added to the wall has created. It has a chic and beautiful look now and I'm so excited to finish off this bedroom makeover. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so you can come back and see the full bedroom reveal that is coming soon. I will also uh, be answering any of your questions that you might have down in the comments below. Also hit that thumbs up button if this video inspired you, which I hope it has. And I'll have more DIYs and inspiration popping up on your screen that you can check out next. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye everyone.